Welcome to another Mike Reed's Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing John Maynard Keynes' The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money. And in this review, I'm going to do something I hope I never have to do it again because it's something I would I don't I would never advocate for and I don't like doing, and that is to review a book that I have not finished. In this case, in particular, because I'm probably not going to wind up finishing it. Um, I want to talk about the actual edition I bought, which I will put a link to in this video's description. And before I get into the actual content, because the content is why I've, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be finishing this book, the actual edition is, well, let's talk about the ergonomics, because I want to talk about, give some sort of positive in this review. And that is that I love the size of the book. I love the feel of the cover. The cover and the binding are extremely well done. Uh, um, you can see the font. The font is, uh, okay, yep. There's the font. The font is a very legible font. Uh, it's not like some of these other books that I've, I've read recently where the font is so tiny that if you don't have eagle eyes like mine, you're going to be straining to read it. Um, the margins are great. Um, the actual paper is of an excellent thickness. It's it's not like it's too thick. I like the fact that it's a bright white background rather than sometimes you get kind of a uh, an off-white rather than a super bright white um, with a very, very dark black font that's contrast. The short version is that the, this book is an incredibly ergonomic design in terms of the book itself. Um, this could actually be written in Chinese, and I have no idea what the content is. Uh, and I would still give the book, in terms of the ergonomics, of a very high rating. Uh, I, I kind of wish books were more like this one in that respect. However, I think that's where the positives come to an end. Uh, because even if we're going to talk about this particular... Um, this particular version, there's there's a preface. There's a, a chapter one, which is the introduction to the book, and then there's no epilogue, uh, no pages, no uh, post. There's no review that you might get, say from. Um, well, well, no, let's not use Adam Smith. Uh, in Thomas Sowell's works, he generally speaking will have a chapter or two. Like in basic economics, the final three chapters of that book are uh, addenda that he he used to revise and improve his work as he continued. And this isn't a case of John Maynard Keynes dying, say like three years after he wrote this book. He lived another like 20 or 30 years at least. So there was plenty of time to do a, re a, retro uh, a retrospective. Um, and, I, and you don't get that in this edition. I don't know if he ever did, but you don't get this in this edition. The the inter, the uh, preface is actually provided by uh, John Maynard Keynes. It doesn't. It's it's I think almost too short because it doesn't really contextualize the the timing of the book's release. It doesn't contextualize what he was responding to all that well. I would not recommend buying this book. And on top of that, on top of that, I mean, this edition is so riddled with uh, gr with grammatical punctuation and spelling errors that I have to assume that they're all typographical. And with this many typographical errors, I can't again assume that that it's just taking just taking the literal original print that happened to have one or two errors here or there, and you're just re re, you know reprinting those errors uh, just to stay true to the original text. I think this is a bad edition. Regardless of the content or the intended content of the book, I honestly wouldn't even recommend buying this edition. I would try to find a different... If you really want to read John Maynard Keynes' The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money, find a different copy. But, I mean, like I said, I want to give uh, be as honest about my reviews as I can, so I'm going to put the link to the version that I have. Now on to the content. Okay, so... To contextualize this in the world of economics, um, I'm, om I'm most of the way through, if you guys have been keeping up, I'm most of the way through uh, Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations. I, I finished Thomas Sowell's big Basic Economics, uh, F.A. Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, uh, Economics in One Lesson by Hazlitt, uh, and a handful of other books. Uh, I'm working on Bastiat right now, uh, a handful of other books by Sowell. This book, its intent, I think, is to... to try to refute the claims of, say, Smith, Bastiat, uh, w and if they were alive at the time, Hayek, um, Sowell, Friedman, 
Hazlitt, you know, I don't think it does a very good job of that. But most importantly, I mean, when you introduce new words, when you introduce new phrases, when you introduce new technical terms, generally speaking, a good, a, in any good, work, well-written work of any kind, you define the term in the sentence that you use it or immediately thereafter. You define it on its first instance. Otherwise, if, especially if it's not obvious, and it has to be obvious, like plainly obvious within context what you mean by that, then there's no way for the reader to, ha- to have any perspective on what those words mean. They, they might as well be reading, like I said, Chinese. Keynes doesn't bother to put his definitions in until chapter 6. So he spends the first 40 or so pages of this book, and the book is only 200 and... 50 or so pages long. So he spent the first first roughly sixth of the book using technical terms that do not exist outside of this book up to that point and are rare outside of the, the Keynesian theory of economics anyways. He doesn't define them until chapter six. And then when he does define them, he doesn't define them in the way that you would say a dictionary or any other form of language. He defines them in an attempt to and he attempts to define them at least in the way that you would define a variable in a mathematical equation but then he doesn't really clearly define what the variable actually means and in many of these cases it shows a total lack of understanding of even the most rudimentary elements of basic finance never mind the economics right he doesn't seem to understand things like like cost of goods sold he doesn't seem to understand things like there's a difference between net income and owner's equity. He doesn't seem to understand the th- th- basic elements of finance like, like, oh my God, revenues, expenses, and owner's equity. This was an incredibly frustrating read. I only barely made it through chapter six, but it was such an incredibly frustrating read. I don't, number one, I don't see how you could possibly develop an, an economic theory based on actual finance, which is what he's trying to do, when your understanding of finance is just totally illiterate of the, of the field. Right. The first lesson you learn in any business school, period, period, you learn this lesson in high school finance, revenues minus expenses equals owner's equity. In the first six chapters, including chapter six, which is his definitions chapter, the words revenue, expense and owner's equity do not exist. How on earth are you building an economic system I'm totally scrapping the original economic system for one that's based on some sort of financial perspective if you have no concept of terms that of even basic terminology within the world of finance that exist predated this book by by 150 years how do i know that because adam smith uses them all the time in the wealth of nations he seems to and on top of that he seems to be basing this on a fundamental misunderstanding of of human interactions and how humans actually engage in transactions especially when referring to those which are mutually consensual I don't want to get into uh, pedantic detail on this matter, but I, I guess I'll end with this. The worst part of this is that he tries to com- two things. He tries to combine things in, in a supposed mathematical perspective, which is, by the way, totally arbitrary because th- those things have are are in no way related. Like, like, why would you say uh, he doesn't do this? But it's to this. It's this. It's in this respect. Although this is a bit of an extreme, multiplying cost of goods sales by net income. What what value would that create for you? Uh, well, it's a meaningless number. I mean, you could come up with a number. I, I could multiply the number of keys on my keyboard by by the number of pages in this book, and you'd come up with who cares, right? And on top of that, the variables the variables that he creates make no sense. Uh, I'll give you a for instance. A is revenue. A prime is cost of goods sold. But usually when you do in mathematics an A and an A prime, A prime is a subset of A. A prime is the next thing in the line of A once that function has been acted upon. So once that variable has been acted upon by a function which is not what we're describing here. In fact, if what we're describing here is revenues minus expense, minus, um, uh, if you take revenues, I mean, there's, you don't get from revenue to, to cost of goods sold. And that's an analogy that he tries to create, which is, is worthless. Worthless. 
Revenue is not dependent on cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is not dependent on revenue. They're mutually exclusive terms. That's why you don't base one thing on the other. So, and on top of all of that, like, he, like I said, he uses variables that make no sense, right? Like we have a, we have a letter for revenue, R. We have a le- letter for expenses, E. We have a, a letters for owner's expense, O-E. Uh, this was so backwards, so confusing, and so straught with even mathematical errors. So if you actually take his variables and actually do out the math that he's suggesting, it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. So, and I mean, it's basically, it's fairly basic arithmetic math that he's putting forth. So what you wind up getting is just a gobbledygook mess of not even a language of any kind. It's just arbitrary nonsense. And again, it's such gibberish that I I followed. And I mean, it's not that I'm, I'm incompetent and can't follow that. It's genuinely gibberish. And I, threw, I, I set the book down after my first attempt th- through, through chapter six, and said, you know, I got to start this over. I'm not making any progress. I'm struggling with this. I'm frustrated with this book. And then I went, went through it again. I read parts, excerpts from this book half a dozen times. I'm making no progress, folks. It's such a disoriented mess that I'm just making no progress. And for me, to, uh, I need to move on. I need to set this book down and just move on to another book, and I probably won't come back to it because, frankly, I don't know how you develop an economic system based on uh, if the mathematics of finance when you don't understand ma- basic mathematics or finance at a rudimentary level and when you decide that you're just going to start making up nonsense, making up terms that never existed outside of your own works that you're not even going to define until the sixth chapter. It's not even well written in that respect. So, you know, I like to close with this with a with a um, a score on a scale of one to ten. I like to give you know with all these reviews. I can't give this a positive review. I cannot give this a positive review. And I know there must be a Manos, the hands of fate out there. But this, so this, I'm going to assume this is basically Geely rather than Manos, the hands of fate, which is not even a movie. Like at least this is a book. Right? Like, it's it's full of nonsense and just, you know, utter garbage and it's based on, on a bad theory. But that just makes it a bad book. At least it's a book. So I'm going to give this a 3 on a scale of 1 to 10 because I, I, I have to assume there is something out there that is just mystery science theater bad to a point where, you know, you get through one paragraph and the next paragraph is in German or just something so out there that has nothing to do with anything um and and then it's not even a cohesive book at that rate so obviously i'm not going to recommend the edition i am not i'm not even normally i would say you know know thy enemy so if you're you're of the austrian austrian or chicago school you should read this book i honestly don't recommend it i honestly would find some sort of some i'd find somebody else who has actually read it uh i'd find a few reviews of the books and just read over the reviews of the books the book and, you know, the ones that seem to, the elements of those reviews that seem to line up, that's probably the truth in the matter. And that's probably what you can glean from this because this, this was brutal. This was a brutal, brutal slog and I do not recommend it. So that's been my review of uh, John Maynard Keynes's The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money. Until the next time, this has been Mike signing off.